Hey coffee nerds. I hope you are doing well. I hope you're sipping on a lovely coffee. And if you're not, stop this video, hit pause, go make yourself a coffee. I'm, I'm just kidding, you don't have to do that. But if you do, go make a coffee. Mm. I'll be waiting here for when you get back because today, what we're gonna be doing is digging into the, the new Pico Presso again, especially dealing with some of the questions that you have asked since I posted my original video, which compared the Nano Presso to the Pico Presso. And if that seems interesting to you at all, bookmark it. I left a little link up here. You can go watch that after. But for now, let's not waste any more time because in five minutes, what I wanna do is run through rapid fire some of the most common questions that I've gotten about the Pico and how you can potentially get the best results out of your brew, out of this tank of a brewer. And clearly I've already had a few cups of these. So let's hit the clock and get rolling. The first question I get asked is, can I use pre-ground coffee? And the answer is unfortunately no, or fortunately maybe. Because pre-ground coffee, you're not gonna get the freshness quite right for brewing espresso, especially with the Pico, all the crema that's gonna come out, all of those flavors. And then the second reason is, you need to be very, very precise with the grind size that you're using. So you're gonna need to do that at home, depending on the coffee that you're using, depending on the ratio and all those kind of things. Which kind of roast level should I use for brewing with the Pico Presso? I would recommend sort of a medium roast, depending on how you define that. But if you go too dark, for example, you're gonna have, first of all, more of those dark sort of burnt flavors, which are not always desirable, but also the coffee can be a little bit oily. So if you don't have a professional espresso grinder at home or you don't wanna get your coffee grinder too oily, uh, a dark roast will potentially do that. And if the coffee is too light, it can potentially come out a little bit acidic and you might not get quite the crema that you would on a slightly darker roast. Again, that comes down to preference. Next question. Can I make a single shot espresso? That would be very handy for me tonight, not wanting to drink too much caffeine before bed, but the answer to that is also no. And because the basket that's provided with the Pico Presso is a double espresso basket. And so unless you have an alternative of the same diameter, I wouldn't advise it. I've tried as low as 15 grams in the basket and it does work to a degree. I might need to adjust the grind setting but it comes out a little bit sour and dry for my preference. And also the tamper here won't be able to go as deep in the basket to give it a good tamp at that amount of coffee. And then as a follow-up, do I have to use 18 grams? That's kind of the recommended dose that we have here with the Pico Presso. And yes and no, you could play around. I've gone as low as 17 and as high as 20 and still getting good results uh, as an espresso. So it just depends on the coffee that you're using, the grind size that you're using, and also depends on the concentrations that you like. What's the best way to preheat the Pico Presso? Because that's an essential part of brewing with this thing. I've had this question, how can I preheat it hot enough? And I've found that if you just do use boiling water, put it in the chamber for a good few minutes, and then pump it all the way through so that the water goes through all the mechanisms and then you fill it again with boiling water, 100 degrees Celsius, around 212 Fahrenheit for our Americans over here, then you're gonna have water that is hot enough. I've gotten some really good results out of these espressos and I would keep in mind that if you are going for lighter roasts, it does work better with higher temperatures. That's why I recommend a little bit more of a medium roast. On that note, I've also been asked, the Pico Press was so hot to hold when I'm pumping it, what can I do? How can I avoid that? And so <laughs> that's a bit of a dilemma. You want it hot, but not too hot. If I hold it here on the top, I notice that it's a little bit colder with the cap and you can get some good squeezing in there. Also keep in mind that when you do squeeze, it generates pressure buildup and that increases the temperature as well. So it can be interesting to have the Pico getting hotter and hotter as you brew, but that that's my method. How could I potentially get a longer ratio for my espresso in the Pico Presso? There's a limited tank, but what I've found is even though there are notches in the chamber that you can use as a guide, I really don't pay much attention to those because I'm always weighing the yield of espresso. You can, the notches are around 60 milliliters, but I found that you can, if you're careful, fill it up to around 90 milliliters. And then even on a 20 gram dose, I can get approximately 60 milliliters of espresso yield 
with that in the chamber. So try that out. It's a nice one to three brew. How easy is it to actually clean the Pico Presso? Well, to be honest, I've found it to be one of the easier uh, espresso brewers to clean in the Wakako lineup because there's only a few little components here. And because they're using a traditional espresso basket, you can just knock that out in the, in the sink and you're left with pretty clean little basket here, the shower screen, which is fairly easy to get out. And then this even comes apart. So you can really get into the nitty gritty of cleaning all of this, which I need to do now after making an espresso. Um, but the top part, it's mostly just water. So leave that out to dry. That's the, that's the most important thing. Give it a nice scrub, even with soap. And I would make sure that it's completely, completely dry before packing up the tamper and the funnel again, because if there is any moisture in here, and if there's any little coffee grounds on here, they can start to mold, but that takes quite a few days. So if you're not planning on using the Wakako, make sure it's completely dry before you pack it up. And time, that's it for now. But if you do have any more questions, do feel free to leave them down in the comments. I'll do my best to, to get to all of them if possible. And by the way, these Picos are now back in stock because during the filming of the last video, they shortly afterwards had sold out. They just flew off the shelf. So I left another link down in the description. You can go check that out, see if it's something for you. I've also left a little pinned comment down in the comments. So I'd be really curious to hear your feedback on that. And do subscribe because that really helps me out a lot, helps these videos get a little bit more attention. And I just love seeing you around. So as usual, cheers. Hmm. It's gotta be like my fifth one today.